Before I begin, a few things to get out of the way. First, this is all just my opinion. You disagree? That's fine. I don't care. Everybody has different tastes in movies, and that makes things interesting. Number two, these are going to be ranked simply by how much they entertain me, how much they inform me, etc. Quality of the film doesn't necessarily figure into it all that much. It does a little bit to some extent, but this is purely on entertainment value no matter what I might think of it on a technical basis. Number three, let's just get the honorable mentions out of the way first. In alphabetical order, we have Ant-Man, best superhero movie of the year. Room, surprisingly good movie about a woman who's kidnapped and then uses her son who is born while she's kidnapped to escape from the room that they're locked in. Shaun the Sheep, movie, most underviewed movie of the year that people took their kids to go see Minions instead of this is a damn shame. Spectre, very good James Bond movie. Some people don't agree, some people it's too derivative. I'm saying if you're deriving stuff from the best James Bond movie, you've still Still got a pretty damn good James Bond movie. Spy, probably the best pure comedy film of the year. I know some people don't like Melissa McCarthy, but even if you don't, I suggest you check this out because Jason Statham is absolutely hilarious in this. Steve Jobs, very good biopic. I really liked how they laid this out, set in a series of presentations he was giving to introduce Apple products. Straight Outta Compton, another really good biopic. Even if you don't like rap, check this out because it's a good commentary on what was happening at the time. And if you do like rap, there's also a kick-ass soundtrack. And when Marty was there, this might be Studio Ghibli's last film. I've heard rumors they might be coming back with another movie, but still really good. If you like their other work, give this a look. So with those out of the way, let's get on to my top 10 favorite movies of 2015. Number 10, The Big Short. It's kind of fascinating how this movie can be at once horrifying as you realize the depth of the greed in Wall Street required to make this crisis happen and also immensely entertaining, mainly through the actors' performances, but also through little cutaways they have to actually explain the financial terms that are involved. And that's actually kind of a neat little take. It's a very self-aware, breaks-the-fourth-wall film, which can be very tricky to pull off. This one does it well. Christian Bale got a Best Supporting Actor nomination. I'm actually really surprised that Steve Carell did not get a nomination here, because, in my opinion, he acted circles around Christian Bale. I might be in the minority there. I mean, I saw Foxcatcher last year. He was all right in Foxcatcher. I wasn't big on Foxcatcher. But here, Carell actually convinced me he can do serious acting. And that's the biggest praise I can give him. This film, really entertaining. I suggest you go check it out. Number nine, Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. It's kind of amazing how these films just keep getting better and better. I mean, the first one was okay, number two kind of sucked, number three got a little bit better, especially due to Philip Seymour Hoppin, number four, directed by Brad Bird, really good film, this one, probably even better than the last one. I mean, the action set pieces in this are just great, especially that opening one that really gets you into the movie, where he's Tom Cruise, and it's actually Tom Cruise on the side of a plane. Yes, you can see the wires in there if you actually watch the special features, but... Man, I've got to respect the actor, not necessarily the man, but his acting, because, I mean, how many actual big-name actors are willing to put their body on the line like that? Bravo. This film, really well done, gets a thumbs up from me. Number eight, The Revenant. This is going to be the most recent film on this list, and I went to go see The Hateful Eight in 70mm. I thought that film was very violent and gruesome and over the top, and I loved it. This film is so realistic, it makes The Hateful Eight look like child's play by comparison. Man, is this film tough to watch at some points, but that's the point. This is a look into what drives a man to survive. Yes, part of it's fictionalized, I get that, but it's an absolutely stunning film, an absolutely fascinating investigation into what can drive a person just to be able to survive in a very harsh environment and the willpower that it takes. Sure, some of it might be a little overblown on some of the long takes, but that bear scene, wow, I love that scene. I could put this film on this list for that scene alone. Number seven, Inside Out. Kind of pains me to have to put this so low because um, I am quite a big Pixar fan, but... Uh, I have to be honest, and this is where it ends up on the list. Not to say it's a bad film at all. It's absolutely great. It's really nice to see Pixar return to form. 
Uh, the Good Dinosaur, it was okay. Didn't love it. Didn't hate it. But uh, Inside Out, I love it. Uh, sure, you can question the actual psychological science behind the movie, but this is one of the few times I'm actually going to use this. It's a kid's film. Don't take it too seriously, okay? Just enjoy it for what it is. It's still pretty smart. It does show how you have to deal with sadness. Just take it like that. Uh, the, the animation's beautiful. It's engrossing. It's actually probably one of my favorite Pixar movies, right up there with The Incredibles and Up in the Toy Story series. I absolutely love this film. Number six, Mad Max Fury Road. What an adrenaline rush this film was. I loved every second of this movie. It's just pure action from an absolute master of the craft. Practical effects galore, minimal use of CGI, you can sometimes tell where it's used, and you can complain all you want about how Mad Max is not the main character of this film. One, he's a pivotal character, he literally turns the film around. Two, this is about him discovering what it takes to be Mad Max again. Without Furiosa to point him in the right direction, he does not become Mad Max. That scene where he goes and takes care of the people who are chasing him and it's all off screen, I don't care that it's off screen, anything they could have put on screen there is less than what you can imagine in your head. That's why it's done that way. This is how you make an action movie. Pay attention, Michael fucking Bay. This is what we want. Not your just meaningless explosions. This. Thank you, George Miller. Number five. Kingsman, The Secret Service. Okay, as much as I praise Mad Max Fury Road for being an excellent action movie, this is a great combination of the spy genre mixed with comedy, mixed with action. What more can I say? It's a nice send-up to the old Roger Moore era James Bond. It has an absolutely great possibly the best action sequence, despite anything in Fury Road, that is in a film this past year in that church scene. Colin Firth, who knew he could be an action star? The guy's been in, like, romances, and yet here he is, just kicking ass on screen. Taron Edgerton. Never heard of the guy before. Looking forward to his movies from now on. I mean, he was in Legend, the Tom Hardy movie, which yeah, really isn't all that good. He's fine in it, but... I want to see him in more movies where he's the lead and doing action stuff, because he's actually pretty damn good. Looking forward to more from this series. Number four, Creed. Confession time, I'm not really a huge fan of the original Rocky franchise. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like the first couple of films, after that it really trails off. Kind of not really into the whole Rocky thing. This film made me care again. And how much can I say about Michael B. Jordan actually coming back from Fant Forstick and making this absolutely superb performance? It's a little bit weak in the love story aspect. I didn't buy that one so much, but anything to do with the boxing, fascinating. The visual style, absolutely engrossing. Stallone just sliding perfectly into the supporting role as Rocky. I mean, he's still Rocky. But he's not the main character anymore, and he just fills that supporting role so well that, yeah, he is actually my choice for Best Supporting Actor for this year. Who would have thought? Number three, Spotlight. I've tried about four times right now to explain why I love this movie so much. It's not necessarily that it does a great job of explaining how these reporters unveiled the Catholic Church cover-up of child molestation by priest. It's not necessarily that... The actors all do a great job. This is probably the best ensemble you will see on screen in quite a while. But that's not really why I love this film. Why I love this film so much is that the characters are all real people. They're all real flawed people. Yes, these are people who did unveil this uh, cover-up. But they're just people doing their job. And that's how this movie portrays them. It doesn't try to glorify what they did. It just says, here's how they did it. And it's really fascinating just watching them uncover everything and realizing that, hey, maybe we should have uncovered this earlier. Why didn't we do this? But you know what? We did it. We have to tell this story. Let's do it. Great film.
Number two, The Martian. Why I like this film so much is that it got so much of the science correct. Yes, I can hear you say, oh, science, that's so boring. No, it's not. It can be very entertaining and very informative if done correctly. And the nice thing about this film is that it does get so much of it correct. Matt Damon, yeah, I know, we're off to save Matt Damon on Mars, just like we saved him in Private Ryan, just like we saved him from Interstellar. I've heard the jokes. This is still probably his best role ever. I really appreciate that he got the Best Actor nomination in the Oscars. Uh, Ridley Scott, really nice to see him recover from the disaster that was Exodus, Gods and Kings, and get back to doing what he does really well, which is tell nice, expansive, absolutely gorgeous looking films that concentrate on just the few characters. Yeah, I mean, yes, there's a lot of side characters here, but this is mostly Matt Damon and his crew and a few people down on Earth who are carrying most of this film. And frankly, I loved it. I found it engrossing. And my favorite film of 2015. And now one of my favorite films of all time, and I'm not even joking about that. Ex Machina. I simply love this film. And the first time I saw this film, I walked into the theater and thought, I think I really like that film. And then I saw it again, and I realized that not only did I like it, I loved it. It's a very small cast. They all work incredibly well together. Alicia Vikander got nominated for The Danish Girl. She really should have got nominated for Best Supporting Actress for this film. She's fine in Danish Girl, if anybody wants to know, but that film is really overrated. My opinion, whatever. Anyway, we're talking about Ex Machina here. Oscar Isaac, great. As this really fascinating, really kind of, you don't know what he's thinking, head of this tech company, Domo Gleeson, you know, two actors from Star Wars, The Force Awakens. Also doing a really good job as his employee who's brought in to check to see if Alicia Vekander's character actually has artificial intelligence. And then he just unpeel layer after layer after layer of what's actually going on in this facility. And the ultimate question is, does Alicia Vikander's robot actually have artificial intelligence? And I'm not going to reveal the ending, but in my mind, that ending reveals that yes. And it not only reveals that yes, she's artificially intelligent, or just, let's just say intelligent, but it actually shows what is actually required in order for a machine to really be considered of equal to human intelligence. And the ramifications of that is actually kind of scary. And that's all I'm going to say, because I really want you to watch this film and really consider what it means. Because, as I said, this is now one of my favorite films of all time. And, yes, please, by all means, do check it out. Anyway, those are my favorite films of 2015. Tell me what yours are below. Agree? Disagree? Let's just talk about it. Enjoy films. Enjoy the films that are coming up in 2016. There are several that look good. First one I'm really looking forward to is Deadpool, of course. But next up will be my Oscar predictions for the 2016 awards. All right, guys. I have worked on this video for long enough. I'll talk to you later.